Oh yes, we got some people now. How's it going, Jenna? <laughs> Hopefully everyone's excited for um, talking about the TMJ. So this topic is near and dear to me because I enjoy treating this. I've been doing so for many years and, and I guess you could say I specialize um, in this area. So yeah, we're gonna learn a little bit more about the TMJ and, and temporal mandibular dysfunction. have a few things prepared so we're gonna go through a few things I'm um, just gonna wait for a few more people to join on zoom um, and then we'll get started so just bear with me just for a few minutes Okay, I'll give it a few more minutes guys and then we'll go through um, <clears throat> some TMJ stuff. Just connecting everyone on all the platforms. So for Instagram, if anything boots us out, just um, go into um, Zoom. So our link is on our posts and on Facebook, so you can you can check it out there as well. Um, yeah, we'll give it a few more minutes. I prepared some some more jokes. I think I, got, I think I got some more dad jokes. Okay, here we go. So, What do you call a factory that sells passable products? A satisfactory. Well, that's not too bad. If anyone has any dad jokes, please type them out. <laughs> or uh, I can unmute you and you can share some jokes. Here's another one. To whoever stole my copy of Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. No, I didn't hear any laughter, but. <laughs> All right. Spring is here. I got so excited, I wet my plants. No, okay. That was a pretty good one. <laughs> I told my girlfriend she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. That's not too bad either. Uh huh. What do you think? What do you think, Brooke? How was that? Well, I'm laughing. So. Do you have any other? Do you have any of your own? Um. Hmm. Not off the top of my head. I'll think of some. <laughs> okay. Well, here's here's one. I like telling dad jokes. Sometimes he laughs. <laughs> oh, they're too good. <laughs> I got some. I got some. Easy, yeah. I guess everyone has to laugh. You're kind of like on the spot. Okay, let's um I will mute you. I'm sorry. This will hurt me more than it'll hurt you. All right. So, there's actually I got some like jaw ones, jaws, like the movie Jaws. Have you heard of that? Where is it? I have it. How does Jaws unwind at the end of a long day? And remember Jaws is like a great white shark, like a big big shark, a killer shark. With a glass of shark do shark donate. It's a great white wine. Huh? Huh, Brooke? Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay. My doctor told me he had some jaw dropping news for me and I rushed excitedly to his office. This is pretty bad. Apparently I have leprosy. <laughs> that's, that's a bit dark. It's difficult to find a good jaw removal doctor. You can never rely on word of mouth. <laughs> that's a good one. I think that's the winner. Um, yeah, so today we're going to go through the temporal mandibular joint or TMJ for short um, and then some dysfunction as well. So we'll go through some anatomy like we, we normally do for a lot of the conditions and then we're going to go through some 
um, pathophysiology. So how the issues are created, like what, like what's exactly happening with, with the TMJ. It is a complex joint, so we're not gonna get like crazy into detail, but enough to, to understand its function, why um, you can have these injuries or issues and how to, how to start treating yourself. So it was interesting for me, um, my first practicum, I think my mentor is gonna log on soon, but my first practicum, or sorry, sorry, my last, my final practicum of physio school, um, and they're all six weeks each, was in Saskatoon. Um, and it was with a specialist of the jaw and, and headaches and um, cervical issues, so neck, jaw, and headaches. And um, to be honest, like I didn't know much about him, um, just because I was living in Edmonton at the time, and I wasn't very excited. I'm like, the jaw? Like, I don't want to treat the jaw. Why would I want to do that? That's crazy. How can you even treat the jaw? <laughs> so I wasn't excited about the practicum at all. He's not logged in, so I don't think he can hear this, but... Um, and then when I got there, I found out he was the Orthopedic Chair of Canada, very, like, very skilled physio, very well-dressed. He taught me, like, how to make physio look cool. Um, and he... He taught me everything I knew about the TMJ, about cervicogenic headaches, about um, like everything, low back, very, very manual therapist and like amazing, amazing physio. Always wanted to work with him um, and hopefully in the future we, we can maybe open up like one of these clinics together. Uh, but he was very um, instrumental in the way I treat. So a lot of what I um, do as a physio and how I do it is because of him and um like i couldn't i couldn't ask for like a, a better friendship as well so he's been supportive <laughs> throughout this process uh as well so i think i thank him quite a bit and when he comes on i will thank him again um yeah so he was like huge for me and i love treating this area this is something that i really enjoy so i work with a number of uh orthodontists and dentists in the city and a couple of uh, TMJ specialists in the city as well. For, for years I've been doing that, so I do presentations, and part of this presentation is from the one that I present to uh, physicians and dentists and orthodontists, so something I, I, I am very passionate about and something that's very effective. So you talk about being a physio, this is kind of like one of those areas that you feel like a rock star. If you treat it appropriately, like it gets better pretty quick. Um, so a lot of patients that I work with, young or old, I'll have a good idea of what the, the issue is. And then I'll say, well, if we correct it, um, you should notice results pretty quickly. So kind of like Rob with vestibular rehab, like he'll get like the same day improvements um, and, and relatively short treatment programs. Like I won't see people super frequently for these unless it's like a severe traumatic injury. So um, yeah, and that's how this place came about. Um, Oasis Orthodontics is within this building and, and Dr. Knoffel has been a, a referral source for years and he, um, yeah, so he asked me like, hey, it's time to open up business. So <laughs> I did, <laughs> which I think was a good call, even in light with, all, with everything that's going on. So um, yeah, so I'll continue doing the TM, TMD issues and, and I love working with those patients because it's, it's quite a unique, a unique caseload. Um, and I'm happy to, to send a presentation out. I have one that's more detailed. So if anybody wants like a full, PowerPoint of everything, I can send that to you. Should be easy enough to follow for anybody. Um, and then there's always Google. So yeah, we're gonna get started with the jaw. And I'm gonna do a screen share. I think, yes. And actually first, I'm going to pull up something. There's a video that I wanna show as well. So. Um, there's a video I show to quite a few uh, of my patients. It's pretty straightforward to follow through, so I think I'll show it to you guys. That way we can all follow along. It's pretty straightforward. I, it's like my go-to video to, to show patients. Hello for everyone who's coming in. So we're just gonna get started. That's him. And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna go through some things and should be a good time. So without further ado, I'm gonna... Sorry, sometimes I just stop mid-sentence. That's just because there's 
for me, a lot of technology around. <laughs> for others, maybe not. So here is, yeah, here's that. So we're gonna start a little slideshow. I'm gonna grab this. So sorry for Instagram. I don't know how to screen share like a PowerPoint presentation, but so you have Pursuit of Motion Physiotherapy, TMJ Rehab. Um, yeah, so that is the first slide. So next slide, <clears throat> symptoms of TMD. So TMD stands for temporal mandibular dysfunction. So your jaw dysfunction. So typically it's severe discomfort and pain along jaw, ear, face, and cervical spine. So people often get clicking, popping, um, and sometimes locking. You have troubles chewing, headaches, often temporal, so the sides of your head, tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears, numbness and tingling can happen as well. Numbness and tingling, not as common, but uh, it's still present, like it still happens. I'm just gonna rotate this a little bit so that way there's no glare. That's better. Oops. So that's better. Okay. So anatomy time. So you have the TMJ right there. So here's the joint itself, right? So right there is the joint. And then for the zoom peeps, this is the joint. So you have a cartilage plate, like you, have, you still have a disc inside that joint. So it still functions like other joints. Um, and you have quite a bit of muscle. So this is just to show there's quite a bit of muscle. So when you talk about headaches, you have the temporalis muscle um, up here. That muscle is involved with the headache. So if you have lots of tension in that muscle due to a jaw condition um, or dysfunction, then you can get headaches referring into, we talked about referral patterns last week and we're gonna get into that today. Along this area, kind of along the side of your eyebrow, you can get pain kind of into the, into the, even the teeth. So a lot of people think it's like tooth pain. So when you look at the, the TMJ, I'm going to stop the video here and then do this. So if you have TMJ pain, typically you get pain in this area. You can get pain up in here. Some people mistake it as, as tooth pain as well. So I've had some patients in the past that have had teeth removed because <laughs> TMD issues. Um, they had to remove the specialist or whoever was working with them thought it was due to like something with the root or a tooth but it wasn't, so that, that's an extreme case. You don't want teeth pulled if you don't have to. Um, so if you have jaw pain, it's typically in this area, you can get it up here and into the teeth, and you can get some pain into the side of the head, which would be headaches. Um, and the joint itself, people think it's here. So people think often the pain is here, that's where the jaw, the jaw is. So actually if you go right, right in front of your ear and open and close, you can feel a little bit of gapping. So that is where the joint is. So the joint actually is right up here. I know I have long sideburns and beard, so it might be hard to see, but that's where the joint is. So when I open, I can actually feel a gap. So if you do that to yourself um, and, and, and feel that gap, it's good to know, good to know where the joint is. Cause sometimes people again will be like, okay, pain's here, my jaw is over there. So um, that's important to, to know. And I was going to say, actually, if, if, if you guys want some of the exercises or the funny stuff we do today, maybe like take a video and put it in your story and tag us in it as well. And I can reshare it on our page. I think it'd be fun to, to start doing that. So not going to force anybody, but it would be, it would be really nice to do that. it will go a long way for us too. And I like spreading the word and it's, it, it'll be fun for people to, to see what you're doing at home. I think it's important uh, for people to see that. So back to sharing the screen to yeah so there we go so if we go back to the anatomy time so there is the jaw that we just covered um, and referral patterns so like I was talking about here's your referral patterns you have muscles also called the pterygoid so you have um, the lateral pterygoid medial pterygoid so this shows the lateral pterygoid referral pattern so X's are where the the trigger points are so the majority of the pain and then you have um, up here and up here, is, that's a referral pattern, so the hot spots of the pain. So you have the trigger points uh, or the areas with a lot of pain, and then you also have the referral patterns around this area. Then you have the temporalis muscle, so quite a few things going on. So 
you have each trigger point and then above it kind of shows above and below kind of shows their um their referral patterns so you have kind of going into here is one there is another one so that's one that's one that's one so you can see it's quite a widespread area in the head right so you can get headaches and sometimes people don't have jaw pain they just have headaches so they assume it's just a headache but a lot of the times i find um, you treat the jaw and these muscles and then their headache goes away which is really cool to see happens quite a bit um, and then you can even see the the red in the teeth so pain gets referred into the teeth then you have the masseter so the big big muscle on the side of your jaw so when you bite down you feel a ball that pops out uh, that's the masseter so you have um, yeah so you have the referral patterns here kind of going up into right below the eye and down the jawline so these are common referral patterns so you have three different muscles so you have the left have the temporalis and then you have the masseter so three not all the muscles but three big ones so this is typically what i see quite a bit of um so causes a tmd direct injury to your tmj muscles of the head or neck can be traumatic um so like an impact to the head i've seen some martial artists that have been kicked in the head and and had these issues uh grinding clenching your teeth frequently dysfunctions of the disc arthritis stress motor vehicle collision anatomical dysfunctions you could be born with some issues um, you've heard of people uh, have to get jaw surgery to realign it, so it could be congenital. Um, I'm going to fly through this a bit, so I don't want to uh, confuse anybody, but I also want to get into some, some th rehab as well. So causes a TMD, you have intraarticular, which means within the joint, inflammatory conditions such as like a trauma, internal derangement, structural changes, so like a disc issue, arthritis, uh, joint hypermobility, which means too much movement, hypo meaning not enough movement, uh, muscle spasms for extra articular, so outside of the joint, cervical postural disorder, so posture plays into this, There's a lot of crossover between the neck and the jaw, um, so there's, um, you can have issues that are present in both areas, temporal tendinopathy, fractures, that kind of stuff, so typically with an assessment, I'll discuss with the patient a detailed history of What's been going on, similar to many assessments that we conduct, um, what's been going on, where are your pain hotspots, kind of like the referral patterns that we just looked at, and then I'll map out some stuff, aggravating factors, what makes it worse, what makes it better, do you have headaches, where are those headaches, do you have dizziness, do you have tinnitus, so ringing in the ears, clicking and popping, which side it's coming from, whether it's happening when you're opening or when you're closing, um, those kind of questions, pain scales, so asking people 0 to 10 questions, activity of daily living. So a lot of the times with TMJ issues, people comment on like yawning, eating, eating's a big thing. Um, and then they people realize how important eating is to your daily life and how joyful eating is. So typically with people with severe jaw issues are usually pretty irritable um, and are not as happy, So, which is normal. If you can't eat what you want, then... Um, you're going to be pretty miserable, right? So even me, I like eating a lot. <laughs> so if I can't eat the things I like eating, I would be miserable. Um, activity, yeah, that's what I mean by ADLs. And visible deviations, you can even see these things with people, their jaws not aligned. Um, so observation, you see the patient, see them talk, and you can see deviations there. You do uh, range of motion, so see how their opening and closing is do some stress tests for the ligaments, um, palpating, so feeling around the joint and the muscles, determine if there's a, a joint issue or not, and differences between left and right. Um, a quick case study, so I had a 13-year-old a female in the past, so several years ago, was in grade seven, enjoys playing softball and volleyball. Um, and, and the thing with the, the age is a lot of times you have younger individuals like this is one injury I see across lifespans. I can't say it's more common in one age over the other. Um, I see it quite a bit all across um, the lifespan. So pretty active 13 year old uh, has complaints of left headaches and TMJ pain for the past two years. So this is to show a lot of people suffer these issues for a long time and, and they might not get help right away because a lot of the times they don't know where to go. Usually when people have jaw pain, their, their first thought is not to go see a physio, it's to, to see your dentist or something like that. Um, and the parents actually started noticing significant deviation of her jaw when she was yawning and speaking. So, and then 
she did indicate she clenches during periods of stress and pain ranges from five to eight out of 10 for, for her. So you could, quite a bit of pain that she had. So you look at the range of motion of the neck up here, um, nothing crazy about it. Like, yes, her, her side flexion motion, so bending her head to the side was limited. Um, you have active range of motion up here. So opening, so opening your jaw was 40 millimeters with seven millimeters of left deviation. So indicating just the jaw was shifted seven millimeters to the left, which is pretty significant um, when, you, when you see it. So that's, you know, it's almost a centimeter. Um, closing gap on the right side. So when she bit down, there was a bit of a gap on her right side. And then left lateral deviation, so moving her jaw, jaw to the left was 13 millimeters. Right lateral deviation was five millimeters. So you could see you want it to be similar on both sides. So you could see it was, it was deviated to the left because you have such a large deviation there. And when I was palpating, so when I was doing the exam, I was feeling for a lot of tone and, and muscle spasms in the masseter, muscle belly, the temporalis, and a muscle called the lateral pterygoid, all greater on the left. So she had more pain on the left. Um, and the joint play, so assessing the joint, which I had to put, this is where you actually like spread the jaw apart um, intraorally, so inside the mouth, and noticed uh, decreased distraction of the joint, and we can talk about what that is. So treatment plan always begins with education to patient and parents. So I had to educate her and her mother and father. Um, exercise was controlled opening. I'll show you what that is. Deviation stretches. I'll show you what that is. And self soft tissue release. I'll show you what that is as well. So manual therapy involved joint mobilization. So so providing her with techniques to improve joint play or sorry joint uh, excursion. Soft tissue release. Deep deep friction. Um, deep tissue frictioning. So um, I'll show you what that is as well. So a lot of stuff to to show you guys. And a lot of self-care, right? So within the exercise was self-management techniques. So quite a few things she could work on her own and manual therapy. A little bit different with this joint. Sometimes um, it is quite needed regularly uh, for, for a period of time. And once it's, it's moving to a certain range, then you can kind of discharge somebody to a home program. Results. So after five weeks, and this is just seeing her, I think, five or six times. So not very long. Um... Minimal complaints of pain or headache. She had minimal deviation when yawning and opening. Unable to utilize self-management techniques. This is huge for people. That means that you are able to use the skills that you have been taught to manage your own symptoms, your own pain. So at that point, that would be a successful discharge to me. Yes, she could have a little bit of issues, but now the biggest thing is she can manage it on her own. And I think that's the most significant thing um, for people to be able to do. And so people often think when we discharge, it means you have no issues. That's rarely the case. Um, if, if we followed people to when they were 100% or whatever their 100% is, then we'd be seeing them for quite, some long, quite a long time. If they're like 80, 85% and, and you can give them techniques and you know if they do those techniques, they'll be fine, then that's when you would discharge. Um, so yeah, final assessment. I gave her some neck stretches, so that improved from 90%, or it was 80% initially and improved to 90. So opening again was, was similar, but now there's only one mil millimeter of left deviation versus the, um, the seven that she had initially. So that's a huge change. So barely a difference, and that's fine. That's, that's, that's a difference that's, that's normal. Closing was normal, so there's no gap. She had left lateral deviation of 13 millimeters and right lateral deviation of 10 millimeters. Um, so that's improved. Again, slight difference, but that improved quite a bit from, I think it was five initially. And then palpation. So when I was assessing her, her muscles and joint, there was minimal pain. So pain gone down significantly. And then the left distraction joint play was a slight decrease. So a little bit stiff, which you could still tell by the above numbers, but... Um, it's definitely self-manageable. So yeah, that's the, <clears throat> that is the, um, TMJ. So we have a video here. I'll probably mute it cause we don't really need to have the audio. So I can explain the audio for this. So you have the jaw here. So here's the jaw, um, and it's going to blow it up here. So that's the, the joint itself. So quite a bit higher than most people think. You have a couple bones here, and that's the movement, and now it's gonna blow it up over here. 
Um, clearly, I, <laughs> I see this video a lot. <laughs> so here's the joint itself, right? So here's your articulation here, meaning uh, that's where the movement occurs. So now when the jaw opens, you'll see it slide forward and the disc will follow suit, that articular disc. And that's going to be normal motion. So it's going to open soon here, I think. There we go. So opens and closes, opens and closes. So you can, this is normal motion. So this is a healthy jaw. And then you can have, again, a lot of jaw issues. There's locking, there's uh, derangements, and there's a lot of those fancy words, which I can make more simple for you guys. And you never really have pain. So the, the disc itself, the pink thing here, doesn't have any nerve ending. So you're not gonna get pain from here, you're gonna get pain from the musculature here or the retrodiscal tissue, so the ligament in the back that keeps things in place. So you don't get pain from the disc itself, you get pain from the surrounding tissue. Um, yeah, so you have, <clears throat> I'm gonna forward here. So that's the thing. So the disc's job is to reduce friction in the joint and help things glide properly, right? So that's the disc's job, just like a meniscus in the knee, for example, is to reduce shock, like it's to absorb shock um, and kind of like shocks in your car. So that is the disc in the jaw. That moves a bit more than the meniscus, so a little bit more tricky, but the jaw makes a couple of motions. So it, it, it moves downwards as you open, it moves forward and it moves out. So those are three motions that happen with it. The first bit of opening is usually the jaw moving down and forward. So you get those motions here. Um, yeah, so usually the opening, so when you open your jaw, it's a normal range of motions about 40 to 40, 40 to 55 millimeters. Um, that's a range, there's argument a little bit about that, but that, that's the range I follow. Lateral deviations usually like 10 to 15 millimeters. Um, so moving your jaw side to side, which I'll show you what that is. And um, yeah, so there's, there's those motions. So that's normal again. <clears throat> now we're gonna go into disc displacement. So sometimes the word anterior derangement's used, um, meaning just the disc is out of place, you could say. It's not dislocated fully, but, so this is disc displacement. So you can see this disc is relatively um, forward. Oh, shoot, sorry. I think uh, something happened with the sharing, so I'm sorry if you guys missed some of that. Um, we'll go back into the video here. So we have, sorry, disc displacement. Apologies for that, guys. Um, so now the disc has shifted forward relatively uh, from its original position. So the clicking that you normally get with the TMJ usually happens when that mandible slides over the disc, right? So the disc isn't in position. Um, so when you get that area ex essentially sliding over, you get that click, which is that star that, that gets brought up. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, sorry, Brooke, if you want to go back on Zoom. <laughs> I know it's, it's working fine. It just did. I don't know why I did the screen sharing stop, but um, yeah, so there it is. And then you have locking, so you have disc derangement without reduction, meaning it's locked. So if you open your jaw and you can only open a little bit if anyone had that issue, uh, that means the disc is now so far shifted forward, the mandible can't glide properly in that area. So then you have a serious issue and you have locking, and that's when people usually freak out a bit because, I mean, I've had locking once after I got my wisdom teeth removed and I couldn't... Um, open my mouth to get a, a spoon in my mouth. So this is a good video. Um, so it's a temporal mandibular joint anatomy and disc displacement animation. So if you wanted to, to find it, uh, you can. So I'm gonna stop the sharing. Good, and come over here. So that's a bit of anatomy. Um, and we'll get into exercises as well. So and I'll probably have to grab a glove. So there's a few exercises that you can do with the TMJ. So I'm gonna to try to make this work for Zoom and Instagram. So when, you're, so when you open, you open your mouth wide, you could have a deviation, right? So if it's shifted left or right, um, that tells us a number of different things. And we don't need to get into the crazy theory about it, but you wanna correct that. So if there's an issue, it's typically pain or clicking, 
um, and you want to correct those things. Oh, we got Vince here, my my mentor, my master. So the guy I was talking about that I did a practicum with has is in attendance now. So you missed all the theory, Vince. You missed the anatomy. Damn. Uh, but <laughs> I assure you, I think I did a good job. Um, so with the jaw, it's it's quite a unique area because you can teach quite a few skills still. So just like any other joint, you can still do a lot of self-management with patients and it's very effective. So um, yeah, and then even with the research, there's a few articles that <clears throat> I did look up, which I don't have to go through the names of all of them, but <laughs> there was one that looked at, um, let's see here, like depression, depressive, sorry, depression and anxiety. Um, and, and jaw pain. So they noticed a lot of people with TMD issues also had um, higher symptoms in depression and anxiety. So when you talk about affecting quality of life, I, I think it's, it's huge. Like I have patients that come in, have significant issues with their jaw and they can't eat what they want to eat, which is a bigger deal than you would think. So we take it for granted, like eating a piece of steak, for instance, is, is something that's enjoyable for some or, or whatever food you're into that might be harder or chewier, but if you can't eat it and you have significant pain with it, um, then your, your quality of life is, is suffers due to that. So uh, another study looked at orofacial manual therapy. So it's so doing manual therapy with uh, TMD issues also improved cervical impairments and headaches. So when you look at those referral patterns of those muscles, you can see that, I mean, it can cause headaches. If you treat the jaw, you should be able to, to help alleviate those headaches if it's, if it's from those muscles. Um, yeah, and then manual therapy for the management of pain and limited range of motion in subjects with signs and symptoms of temporomandibular disorder, systematic review, so a big study, showed that doing a lot of myofascial inter and or extra oral, so inside and outside the mouth um, therapy treatment um, had significant effects on opening, so range of motion and pain. So that kind of proves to us that, that there is significant changes with manual therapy, um, which I find for this joint is, is quite heavy. It can be quite heavy and I see big results. So like if I'm treating somebody with, with the TMD issue, I do the manual therapy technique, um, usually more complex than just doing that. <laughs> um, and then I remeasure, right? So. If someone comes in with like 30 millimeters opening, for instance, like you're very limited in opening, I'll do a technique, a distraction technique, for example, and then reassess. Okay, now it's like 35. Okay, like we're on the right track. If it deteriorates or it gets worse, then you change the treatment plan. So within treatment, we're constantly remeasuring, reassessing, and making sure we're, we're on the right track. Um, even with dry needling and acupuncture, there's a study done on that looking at active myofascial trigger points in the master muscle, and it showed greater improvements in all outcomes when dry needling was done compared to like sham dry needling or a control group. So it shows that dry needling is very effective. Um, it can be very effective in the treatment of TM TMD. So um, any questions so far, either on, on Zoom or on, on uh, Instagram? I'll wait a couple of minutes, but that's that's kind of a little bit about the anatomy, um, a little bit about what kind of issues you can develop, what, what, whether it's inside or outside the joint, inter or extra articular, and then also some research as well, showing that, that physiotherapy is significant to uh, the, the treatment of TMD. So, see it quite a bit. No questions? Okay, let me grab, I'm gonna grab a couple things. I'm gonna grab a glove, so I'll be right back. <laughs> I'll show you a couple things to do. All right, so I'm back. So with the clinic, we will assess the, the range of motion. So the opening will measure. Again, we want that to be like 40 to 50 millimeters. If it's too much, then there's issues. If it's too little, then there's issues. Um, you could be too stable or unstable. So let's say, like for, for a lot of people at home, this can be really useful, I think. So if you're treating yourself, so nowadays, again, you can't come in directly to see a physio, and if you don't wanna do tele-rehab, 
um, or don't have the funds or resources to do it, there's easy things you can do at home to start some rehab. Uh, obviously, if things get worse with any of these, just stop and don't do it. These are just recommendations. If you have severe pain, then go get some help right away. Like if it's locked and you can't eat and do anything, then get some help right away. But if it's been an issue for several months or you notice like a little bit of stiffness, then it's best to be proactive and, and do some of these things to, to help before you get a serious issue. Most injuries with this, um, I see kind of repetitive issues. So they are like, yeah, I had a one, out of, one or two out of 10 pain in my jaw. And then <clears throat> it kind of got worse after a few weeks, wasn't too bad. Then a couple months go by, then a couple of years go by. And then now you have significant <laughs> issues. It'll take longer to, to treat somebody because they're just more things. Then it progresses into like neck pain, it'll progress into headaches clicking can get worse um, so even if you notice a click if it's annoying and it's very frequent then not a bad idea to get some help <clears throat> so with exercise there's one exercise that is commonly given to individuals so if you're at home do a quick assessment right so open your mouth and see if your teeth are lined up if there's a bit of a shift to, to either side um, then you, you could do some of these exercises right so if your teeth don't line up like it's you open and it's like deviated, so this would be deviated to the right, then you might have some issues, right? You might be feeling the pain before you notice the deviation. So if you notice that, then there, there's ways to correct it, right? So a good exercise to do, um, which is commonly done, is called controlled opening. So you put the tongue to the roof of your mouth and open as wide as you can. So everyone try it. Um, I can't prove that if you've done it or not, but if, <laughs> if you can, Try to take some pictures of yourself doing it, like tag us in it, and then we can make more people see it, right? So if, if more people see what we're doing, then they're, they're more likely to, to check us out and get some tips as well. So, so you, some of you I know have done this before, but if you put the tongue to the roof of your, roof of your mouth and open wide, if, what that does is it limits your opening. So a lot of the times the deviations happen after you open pretty wide. So with this exercise, the tongue to the roof of the mouth helps both joints move at the same rate. So you're getting a higher quality of motion. You're limiting the opening, but you're getting a higher quality of motion. So if you put the tongue to the roof of your mouth and open wide, it's pretty straight, right? So look in the mirror. So definitely like when you're, when you're either later today or tomorrow <laughs> or whenever you have time, go in the mirror and open your mouth and see if your teeth are lining up. If they're shifted, try this exercise. If, it, if it's straighter after, like if, if when you do it, it's straight, then do that. So I tell people every hour or two, do that 10 times, right? So tongue to the roof of the mouth, open wide, hold for about five to 10 seconds and do that 10 times every hour. Easy to do. I have a lot of patients that, that say they do it in their car when they drive and they get funny looks or they do it at work at their desk. But I mean, it's easy enough to do. You can do no equipment, right? So. That's one exercise. So if you have a lot of pain in your masseter area um, or your temporalis area, like we showed you those referral patterns. So even if it translates into headaches, uh, there's a lot of stuff you could do for that. So if you notice you have headaches on the sides here or a lot of pain down here, you could do trigger point release. So just like we do with foam rollers or the ball that we showed for the neck and shoulder, you could do trigger point release and do some frictioning yourself. So if you, let's say for example, as simple as this, if you have pain here, just push in until you recreate a little bit of it, like minimal pain, not like high pain, and then just leave the pressure in there, right? Um, and let the pain go away. So it's releases, next spot, releases, next spot, releases. If you want to get more specific, you can do like a master or a temporalis stretch. So I'm doing my right side. So my left hand comes up over my head left hand's pulling up a little bit and the right hand slides down and I go to a point again that's tender and I leave it there let the pain go away slide down more let the pain go away or you could move up a bit right so now where the top hand was the bottom hand moves up and the top hand goes up and now you're doing more of a temporalis stretch so you're just pushing the tissue apart or pulling it apart sorry and you can do that for a couple minutes at a time right like pull hold relax pull hold, relax. Again, if it recreates headaches, don't be too concerned. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're going to make them worse. If you recreate the headache, then you, then you know that's the spot, right? You were too aggressive. Therefore, it, it just kind of flared up. So if you recreate a headache, not a bad thing. Usually after my first assessment with, with certain jaw issues, 
I tell people, hey, you're gonna feel like you got punched in the head or you're, you're gonna get a, you might wake up with a, a headache that's worse, but that's not bad. I give you the management technique, so you just do those for homework and then you should be able to manage it, right? So um, that's another exercise. A, another really good one is, I'll use a glove here at home, just wash your hands. If you have gloves, use them. So let's say for example, my, the jaw on my left side hurts quite a bit. I put the glove or the hand that's gonna be doing the work is gonna be on, on the right. So what I do is, and then we do some of these therapies or techniques in, in the clinic. So doing some trigger point release intraorally, so inside your mouth. So what I would do is whatever side you have pain on, typically, not all the time, but typically the deviation, so if, it's, if the, my jaw is deviated to the left, a lot of that musculature can be pretty taut uh, on that side. So good idea to, to do that. And, and the best way to do it is to treat one side yourself and then reassess and then open, uh, do it for a few days or a couple of days and then go back to the mirror and open your mouth and see which way, is, is it deviated less? Okay, it, it's less, that means we've helped the problem. Let's continue that plan. It deviated more, okay, we're on the wrong, <laughs> we're, we're not on the right track. Let's switch up our treatment plan. So what you do is you put your thumb inside your mouth, and I don't wanna talk with, with my finger in my mouth, but you put the, the thumb inside your mouth so that, so essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna pinch like this, right? So just like that. So thumb goes in and the index finger pinches with the thumb. So you wanna find your, your finger, your thumb, and you pinch and then you slide down and you find those trigger points. So if you have a lot of pain in, in your jaw here, you, you pinch in, right? And then you hold it, let it release, move to the next spot and so forth, right? So, um, those are, are great things to do. Uh, I think those are a few homework bits that everyone can do, so you're not gonna develop more issues if you do it. If it hurts more, again, stop. But if you're <clears throat> noticing improvements, then obviously continue, then you're on the right track. So that's a few things you could do for your, for your jaw or for your TMD issues. Um, yeah, I find a lot of people have headaches with these, um, a lot of clicking, a lot of popping occasional locking if it gets worse um yeah so that's that's what i wanted to say for the jaw <clears throat> and some of the associated research so it's shown to you know having jaw pain causes or can increase depressive or anxiety symptoms and then treatment with manual therapy shows significant improvement um, even with um no jaw pain you just have headaches treating the uh, myo like the oral muscles, the facial muscles helps out quite a bit. And then doing the dry needling um, can also be pretty effective. So this is an area that I typically do some acupuncture or dry needling with as an adjunctive treatment. So um, just to kind of expedite the process and make things more comfortable. Not saying it's, it's like a have to, it's not needed, but it does help quite a bit. It's a tool that I find for this area specifically, huge improvements. Um, yeah, and then if you have any questions, either on Zoom uh, or on Instagram, please let me know. You can just type it out and we still got a few minutes. So any questions you have, whether you've had issues yourself or you have um, questions about treatment and, and how it is. If Vince is here, you can request to be on the video if you want. <laughs> you can take some of these questions for me, but um, yeah, and again, this is like, this is an area that, and if Vince is still on listening, um, was an area that I didn't, I wasn't excited about. So when I got the practicum, I'm like, okay, I looked up the details of the supervisor. I'm like, okay, it's a very high level physio. This is going to be great. And then I found out TMJ issues. Like, I don't know, what could you, what could you do with a jaw as a physio? And then I had six weeks with him and changed like my, my world on things. And I like, now I love, love treating it. So it's, it's one thing where my initial assumption was incorrect. <laughs> I kind of ate my words after and um, yeah, like it was, it was a very special practicum and then I learned how, how much treating this area can help. Like a lot of motor vehicle incidences, for example, they get treated for quite some time um, at certain places and sometimes the jaw is never looked at and then you look at the jaw and you're like, okay, all the issues are here. So 
their headaches were stemming from that area. So it's very important to assess it and then have um, appropriate management plans. So there is a question. Yeah, Botox. Um, the question is, is any thoughts on Botox for TMJ or, or temporomandibular dysfunction? It's a frequent request in dentistry when headaches are associated with TMJ issues. So yeah, Botox is pretty common. Uh, I work with a lot of, I work with two specialists, two TMD or TMJ specialists in the city. Um, and luckily for them, like they, they really prefer conservative management. So they always refer to, to physio or, or something else other than, or you know, if, if that doesn't work, maybe using a splint or a device. Um, sorry, the heat just kicked on, so sorry if it's a bit loud. Um, and I find Botox is usually used as management or treatment when it's a prolonged period of time uh, that, that that therapy has been going on. So let's say if like the, the physio fails or doesn't do what you want it to do and there's the device, like a splint doesn't, doesn't do what you want it to do. Uh, then Botox can be used. I don't. I'm not against it. It's it's it's, it's worth a shot. Bad joke. <laughs> um, to to relax essentially all the muscles around the head. So there's significant tone. The Botox can help with tone. But I, it's not usually. If a patient comes to me, for example, if they had three months of pain with the jaw, and and they say that they're rec referred to get Botox, I, I won't say you can't get it, but I'd say maybe we should try conservative management, aka physio. And then if it doesn't get to where you want, then utilize the Botox. I wouldn't go right into Botox. I would try conservative management first and then try to get some injections and, and see if that helps. And it does have, I've had a few cases that have had it. In my experience, mostly motor vehicle accident or collision patients. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers that. Uh, another question is to add to the Botox question, do you know if patients suffering from headaches are covered by healthcare or do patients be out of pocket? So with that is they're typically covered if like, if it's like a WCB incident, for example, or a motor vehicle incident, then um, they're typically covered. Um, and if it's affecting quality of life, then yes, it's, it's more likely to be covered um, as long as it's prescribed by a physician or a specialist. So I find most of the time for Botox, it is covered. It's not coming out of people's pocket versus like um, uh, PRP injections or something like that. And then we have, I'm just looking back through, there's some questions before. So do you have an opinion or evidence that splints or night guards work? Um, I don't have any research in front of me about that, which I do like researching clearly. Um, so for me, like if it's, a lot of the times I get patients that come in and they <clears throat> they have a splint or a night guard or something like that um, and and sometimes they're like well it, it hasn't done anything for me I usually think it's it's better for individuals that might be grinding or like clenching a lot at night and then that's to prevent the, the, the teeth so to speak to, to from wearing down um, in terms of deviations and corrections like I don't find that much of a difference sometimes uh, with treating patients, I'll say, hey, maybe don't use it for a week and see if it makes a difference. And if it doesn't, then well, maybe you don't need it to correct the bite. If it's if it's to protect the teeth or to prevent grinding, then I think it's more useful. Um, again, out of my scope, because I don't make the splints. Uh, but I, for example, one of the specialists I work with in the city, um, great specialist because she typically refers to physio before doing any splint therapy or any, any devices for patients. So I like that because then we can actually treat and then, and then see where we get with, with the physio and with, with therapeutic exercise. So hopefully that answers that. And Vinny, you can, you can tell me if you know more about the research end of it, but yeah, I, like I, I typically say it's okay for, um, for grinding and things like that. But in terms of correction, I don't typically notice too much of a difference in correct, correcting bite um, yeah. So this is a question, have you found benefit to deep neck flexor? That's what I'm assuming DNF stands for. Strengthening along with 
um, direct jaw work. I haven't done too much of that to be honest. Like I, I'll do it if there are issues in the in the deep neck flexors or if like there's a lot of sub occipital tone. If that's too tight, then I'll use that to, to indirectly stretch that area. But um, yeah, I haven't done too much of deep neck flexor training specifically or strengthening um, for treating the jaw. I mean, not saying it's not something that could be used. I can see its validity, but I don't typically do too much of that. And Vince, you can answer too. He's the, he knows more than I do. <laughs> uh, but again, like there's lots of ways to get to um, discharge or get to the goal, but lots of different paths, right? So you can take different paths. Like some, some physios might not even directly do any manual therapy and get quite good results. So, um, but lots of different ways to do it, right? So if you, again, there's a lot of sub, sub occipital tone, which you notice with, with these cases and yes, deep neck flexor training wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, good. Yes, Vince. Vince is in the house. So let's see. With Vince. Oh, you declined. All right, so Vince asked to be in the video, but I don't know what happened. Where did Vince go? Try again, Vince, if you can, to do the video, and then I can hit accept again. Go live. So just one second, guys. We're we're getting uh, one of my mentors, my master, to join in. Oh, there's Vince. Hello. Hello. What's up? Hopefully sorry to barge. Knows. Sorry to barge in. No worries. You're probably going to lose your viewership now that I'm on here. Sorry. I think it'll increase only. I I doubt it. Um. Well, hello. Hello. <laughs> um. I just, I just thought I'd pop on just to, to commend you for what you're doing. Yes, thank um, you. And to, to the viewership that's uh, going on here, I know that Sonny's been talking a lot about um, his experiences with, with, with me. If um, obviously, if I, if I have not met any of you yet, my name is Vince, and uh, I'm a physiotherapist out in BC in Kelowna. And Sonny was one of my, one of my students. Um, uh, in Saskatoon, in fact, I don't know if you went through this history or not, but I'm, I don't want to take too much of the time. <laughs> I, um, I didn't mention Saskatoon. That's for sure. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah, uh, I, I commend you and your group in terms of what you're doing and, and putting out in terms of the content. And I, I'm not sure if, if the reach has, has made it beyond um, Alberta, but uh, yeah, certainly commend uh, you and your group for what you're doing and, and, I don't know if I have much more to add, Sonny, like all the information that I've, I, I knew I sort of passed on to you. <laughs> yeah, hopefully I absorbed all of it. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know if there's, like, I don't, in terms of that splinting question, I don't know by your experience uh, in Alberta and in terms of who has, um, who has been referring, uh, but that certainly, in, in our community, there are many practitioners that are referring um, onto different different types of splints. But I would agree with you, like splinting uh, in general is meant to protect the integrity of um, of the bite, right? Yeah. Um, and the teeth versus uh, some other splints help to redirect position of the mandible, like the lower jaw bone and so on, which will directly affect the position of the, the TMJ yeah. themselves. Yeah. That's what I found too. Like that's why the specialist I work with here, she's awesome. Cause she never, she'll jump to physio first. If it's, if it's the appropriate course of treatment and then six weeks of that minimum, and then she'll reassess and see, and usually it doesn't lead to splinting. It might be Botox or something like that, but um, looks like we got Toronto representing as well. So we got quite a few areas. Um, nice. Yeah. So like, I mean, it's quite a great area. Like I never knew how big of an impact a physio could make before spending time with you, Vince. So, I mean, I thank you for everything that you did for me and, and I hope I make you proud. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, you have Sonny. So that, <laughs> uh, what I wanted to piggyback though on the deep neck flexor question was um, I, I think, 
and you've probably discussed it in terms of the anatomy and the neuromuscular system and the relationship of uh, the neck and upper neck input. Yeah. But I, I, I think in general, um, and if there's a mix of practitioners and, and, and patients on here, like the, the more positive input you can provide mm -hmm. into this system, whether it be jaw or, or neck or posture, um, whether it's related to specific TMJ dysfunction or even in concussion uh, yeah. management, all, all the better, right? Yeah, for sure. I agree with that 100%. That's definitely something. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, being functional and seeing what, what the issues are. So yeah, for postural work, that's, that's huge. There's another question um, from down the hall, actually. This, this individual works for Oasis Orthodox. In orthodontics, we have seen negative side effects of splints. It can be helpful, but should be monitored for any changes in occlusion over time. I mean, yeah, I agree. Like it needs that constant reassessment. So like us, we don't give a whole treatment plan to somebody and then be like, see you later in six weeks, for example. We'll still follow up and make sure that, because sometimes what you give is not going to be what's, what's needed. And then you just adjust the treatment program and you get on the right track. So yeah, I think some people can be over prescribed in some cases um, with, with splints, not over prescribed, but like it, maybe it's not the best course of management. So, yeah. For me, uh, Sonny, if I can jump in, like, and I, and like, again, we're not the splint people, yeah. um, nor the teeth people, but in my experience, anecdotally, splinting, especially those ones that create um, an anterior or a forward repositioning of, of the bone can sometimes have um, quote unquote, a negative effect because yeah. you're, you're shifting everything and potentially shifting bite or potentially the contact of the, the posterior teeth. And sometimes, especially if they've been recommended to, to be placed in those repositioning splints for quite some time, um, it's very difficult, I find, to treat in conjunction um, uh, from a manual therapy perspective because, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the, the contact isn't there. And so the muscles aren't working optimally. Yeah, no, I agree with that as well. I got nothing to add for that. <laughs> um, we got a couple of minutes. So if you can ask more questions, guys, there's only like two more minutes. So it might kick us out automatically. It usually gives me a warning that's, that's coming close to an hour. Um, yeah, you can comment on my facial blemishes. The stress is adding to some acne on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I have no shame, Vince. I have no shame. Um, check out our new post and everyone like take, do these exercises, try these things out and like tag us in it. And then we can, we can repost it on our stories. I think it'd be kind of funny and, and good to see that this is an area that you can manage at home for the time being, and then um, get more advice by direct messaging us and, and, and going from there. But yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Vince. No, thank you. And uh, yeah. I'll I'll uh, I'll exit here right away. But just just to let you know, um, on Zoom and Instagram Live, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. Thank you. Come <laughs> in, Mike. Go see this guy in Edmonton, yeah. St. Albert, wherever you are in Alberta. Go see this guy. Yeah. Everyone okay. in BC, see that guy. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> All right, over Thanks, and out. Man. See you, Appreciate man. It. Appreciate it. All right, so a couple more questions. Isometric strengthening types of exercise for the jaw. Yeah, so isometric is fine. Like if it's painful through range of motion, then I'll do, you know, like pushing, let's say if it's resisting opening, I'll open a bit and then resist that opening. Usually I do more like through range of motion, but isometric can be done if pain's quite high and you want to do, and you want to work on, on strengthening. I'm sorry, I answered that a bit quickly, but I want to make sure we get through all of them. It's heartbreaking to see patients in tears because of pain. And then when they get help to see success is great. Yeah. So we, um, 